Chapter 1 Understanding Persuasion Sophia was a young girl who always seemed to get what she wanted. She had a way with words that made her seem incredibly convincing. People just couldn't help but believe what she said. She could talk her way out of any situation, and she did it with such finesse that nobody ever suspected that she was manipulating them. One day, Sophia had an argument with her friend, Lily. They were both competing for the student council president position, and things had gotten heated between them. Sophia was convinced that she was the better candidate, but Lily wasn't budging. Sophia knew that she needed to persuade Lily to drop out of the race. But how could she do that? She couldn't just tell Lily that she was wrong. That would only make things worse. She needed to find a way to convince her without making her feel like she was being manipulated. Sophia decided to do some research on persuasion. She read articles and books on the topic, trying to find the perfect method to use on Lily. She soon discovered that persuasion was all about communication, emotion, logic, ethics, and belief. Sophia knew that she needed to tailor her argument to Lily's interests and values. She needed to understand her audience before she could persuade them. So she started talking to Lily, trying to get a sense of what was important to her. During their conversation, Sophia found out that Lily was passionate about the environment. She cared deeply about preserving nature and leaving a better planet for future generations. Sophia used this knowledge to tailor her argument. She started talking to Lily about the changes that they could make on campus to improve the environment. She appealed to Lily's emotions, using examples of how much harm littering and pollution could do. She used facts and statistics to back up her argument, grounding it in logic and evidence. Sophia made sure to address any counterarguments that Lily might have had. She acknowledged Lily's concerns about the cost of these changes and showed her how they could save money in the long run. She also made sure to be ethical in her argument, not tricking or manipulating Lily in any way. In the end, Sophia's persuasive techniques worked. After their conversation, Lily dropped out of the race, thinking that Sophia would be a better fit for student council president. Sophia felt proud of herself for using persuasion in a positive way. Sophia learned a valuable lesson that day. Persuasion wasn't just about convincing people to believe what she believed. It was about understanding her audience, tailoring her message to their interests and values, and using emotion, logic, ethics, and belief to make a compelling argument. Sophia realized that she could use her persuasive skills to make a difference in the world. She could bring positive change to her community by using her words for good. She continued to study persuasion, honing her techniques, and using them to make the world a better place. Question, what is the definition of persuasion? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 2, Knowing Your Audience Jane stood nervously in front of the crowded room, mentally going over her notes for the hundredth time. She was about to give a presentation on a new software system, but she was worried that her message wouldn't resonate with her audience. She had done her research on the company and the attendees, but she knew that targeting a message to a specific audience was a tricky business. She needed to be sure that her message spoke to their interests values, and needs in order to gain their trust and make a lasting impression. Jane took a deep breath and began her presentation, focusing on the features of the software that would be most relevant to her audience. She knew that the technical aspects wouldn't be of interest to everyone, so she made sure to highlight the most essential benefits. As she spoke, Jane noticed that some members of the audience seemed to be losing interest, while others were engaged and actively participating. She quickly assessed the situation and adapted her approach to regain their attention. Jane asked questions to encourage empathy and interaction from the attendees, and she made sure to listen intently to their responses. 
she found that some were concerned about the cost of implementation, while others needed assurance that the system would be easy to use. Jane had anticipated these concerns and had prepared answers that would address them directly. She made it clear that the system would save money by streamlining their operations, and she demonstrated how user-friendly the software was. By tailoring her message to the interests of her audience, Jane was able to build trust and establish herself as an authority on the topic. Her knowledge and adaptability made her a valuable resource to the company, and they quickly adopted the new software system. Jane learned a valuable lesson from her presentation. Knowing your audience means understanding their interests, values, and needs, and adapting your message to address them. It means earning their trust through relevance and empathy, while showcasing your own expertise. After the presentation, Jane received positive feedback from the attendees, thanking her for her thorough presentation and her attention to their concerns. She felt empowered and grateful that she could make a difference with her communication skills. Knowing your audience doesn't stop with presentations, it applies to all forms of communication. Whether you're crafting a marketing campaign or having a conversation with a colleague, understanding someone's interests and values will help you to establish a connection that leads to mutual understanding and trust. Question, why is it important to know your audience when writing persuasively? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 3, Using Emotional Appeals The audience sat in silence, listening to the speaker on stage. She had just shared a personal story about her struggles with mental health, and the emotion in her voice was palpable. For a moment, the crowd was quiet, taking in the vulnerability and honesty of the speaker's words. But then, slowly, a murmur began to sweep through the room, and soon there were nods and murmurs of agreement as people began to share their own experiences. The connection was palpable. The speaker had used emotional appeals to great effect, and her message had resonated with the audience in a way that a technical or data-driven presentation simply couldn't have done. By sharing her own story, she had built a bridge of empathy and sympathy between herself and her listeners, and that bridge had created a space for compassion and community. It was a powerful moment. After her speech, the speaker was bombarded with requests to share more of her story. People wanted to know how she had overcome her challenges, how she had found the strength to keep going, and how they could apply those lessons in their own lives. The speaker was more than happy to oblige, and over the next few weeks, she shared several blog posts and videos detailing her experiences. People were drawn to her relatability and authenticity. They saw themselves in her struggles and felt a kinship that went beyond mere admiration. She had tapped into something deep and universal with her emotional appeals, and the response was overwhelming. But it wasn't just the speaker's story that had resonated with the audience. She had also used humor and relevance to connect with her listeners. Her stories were peppered with funny anecdotes and clever observations, and she had made sure that each point she made was directly relevant to the concerns and questions of her audience. In doing so, she had created a space where people felt safe to discuss their own issues and share their own stories. It was a community of empathy and compassion, and it was all thanks to the power of emotional appeals. As the weeks turned into months, the speaker's message continued to spread. She was invited to speak at other events, and her blog posts were shared and discussed by a growing number of people. She had struck a chord with her honest and authentic approach, and it was a beautiful thing to watch. In the end, it wasn't the technical details or the data-driven arguments that had won people over. It was the emotional connection that the speaker had created, the bridge of empathy and sympathy that had allowed people to see themselves in her story. And it was that connection that had inspired them to take action and make a change. The power of emotional appeals shouldn't be underestimated. 
They have the ability to touch people's hearts and minds in a way that no other approach can. By tapping into our shared humanity, we can create communities of compassion and understanding that can change the world. The speaker had shown us that, and it was a lesson we wouldn't soon forget. Question, how can emotions be used to persuade an audience? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 4, Incorporating Logic and Evidence Sarah had always prided herself on being a logical and analytical person. She had always believed that a good argument should be based on solid reasoning and backed up by credible evidence. That's why she was so excited when her boss asked her to put together a presentation on the company's new product line. Sarah knew that to persuade her colleagues to support the new product line, she had to present a compelling argument based on facts and data. She spent the next several weeks researching and collecting the necessary information. She scoured the internet for the latest statistics and researched the competition's products to find out what made the new line unique. Sarah carefully crafted her presentation, making sure to include the most relevant data and research. She knew that her colleagues would be looking for evidence that the new product line was worth investing in, and she was determined to provide it. On the day of the presentation, Sarah stood before her colleagues, nervous but confident. She began by establishing her credibility, citing her own expertise in the field and emphasizing the importance of a logical, evidence-based approach. Sarah then launched into her argument, presenting the facts and statistics she had spent weeks researching. She was careful to explain the reasoning behind each finding, making sure her colleagues understood the significance of the data presented. But Sarah didn't stop there. She also incorporated personal anecdotes from customers who had tried the new product line, adding an emotional appeal to her already solid argument. She knew that people were often swayed by stories and experiences, and she wanted to make sure her colleagues understood the impact the new product line could have on customers' lives. When Sarah finished her presentation, the room was silent for a moment before her colleagues erupted into applause. They had been impressed with the depth and breadth of her research and the way she had presented her argument in a logical, compelling way. Sarah had succeeded in persuading her colleagues to support the new product line thanks to her careful use of logic, evidence, and expertise. As Sarah reflected on her success, she realized that the key to incorporating logic and evidence into her argument was balance. She had to present the data in a way that was both logical and accessible, using a clear, easy-to-follow structure. At the same time, she had to make sure that the information was relevant and trustworthy, relying on credible sources and established research. Sarah also recognized the importance of incorporating emotional appeals and personal anecdotes. While logic and evidence were critical to persuading her colleagues, Sarah knew that people were ultimately motivated by emotions and a desire to connect with others. By using stories and experiences to support her argument, she had made the information more relatable and human. Sarah's experience had taught her that a successful argument required both logic and evidence, as well as emotional appeals. By incorporating all of these elements, she had succeeded in persuading others to support the new product line. Question, why is it important to use logic and evidence in persuasive writing? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 5, Addressing Counterarguments and Ethical Concerns as the team prepared to launch their new project, they knew that there would be opposition and counter-arguments. They had to be prepared to address any issues that might arise, including ethical concerns. The team knew that the opposition would center on the potential negative impact of their project on the environment. They were determined to respect the opinions of those who expressed concerns and be transparent about their plans. They wanted to address all counterarguments in a rational and logical way to show that they had considered all possibilities. In addition, 
the team was committed to honesty and fairness in their approach. They knew that they had to find a way to balance their business goals with ethical considerations. They wanted to avoid compromising their principles while also finding a way to address concerns of the opposition. To achieve this, the team had to practice diplomacy. They held meetings with the community to hear their perspective on the project. They listened to the concerns raised and took them into account while finalizing the details of their project. They wanted to work together with the community to find the best solution to meet everyone's needs. Transparency was a key part of their approach. They knew that it was essential to make information about their project available to the public. By being open and honest about their plans, they hoped to gain the community's trust and demonstrate their commitment to ethical practices. As the launch date drew closer, the team worked hard to anticipate all possible counterarguments. They looked to past projects that had faced similar opposition and studied how they had been addressed. They also researched ways to mitigate the effects of their project on the environment. In the end, the team's rational and transparent approach paid off. They were able to launch their project in a way that addressed ethical concerns while also achieving their business goals. The opposition, who had initially been skeptical, saw the team's respect for their opinions and appreciated their willingness to compromise and find a solution that worked for everyone. The team's success was not just limited to the launch. By practicing transparency, honesty, and diplomacy, they had established themselves as a trustworthy partner in the community. People came to them with ideas and suggestions for future projects and the team listened with an open mind. They continued to prioritize the community's needs while also finding ways to innovate and push the boundaries of their industry. As the team looked back on their project, they saw how their commitment to ethics had paid off. They had shown that it was possible to achieve business success while also respecting the environment and the wishes of the community. They had become a shining example of how to balance competing needs while still maintaining a rational and fair approach. The team knew that their success had only been possible because of their commitment to fairness, ethics, and transparency. Question, what should you do when facing counterarguments or ethical concerns in persuasive writing? Check the video description.